Hey friends, it's Jamin, and I'm gonna be talking about Ignite. Ignite is a React Native project boilerplate or starter kit that my company, Infinite Red, put out like seven years ago, and we've been maintaining it ever since. Really excited about it, really proud of it. It's very battle-tested. We've used it on many, many projects over the years, and all of those learnings get folded right back into Ignite, which is really cool. Like You can trust the decisions that we've made there because we've shipped them in real app. If you go to the repo, you'll see that we list our tech stack, which I'll talk about really quickly. React Native, of course, React. We use TypeScript as the language. That's not very controversial. Well, maybe. React Navigation is the most popular navigation library. There's MobX State Tree, which is a little more controversial. In fact, we're considering removing it and allowing you to bring your own state management library. That's fine. We also use Expo because that the SDK actually allows us to bring in things like Expo font, Expo localization. These are great Expo maintained libraries that are very high quality and we use them in real apps also. I'll talk a bit more about Expo and its role in Ignite later. We also use Reanimated, Async Storage, API Sauce, which is a wraparound Axios for communicating with servers. Uh, we enable Hermes, we use Jest and Maestro as well for testing. So I'll show you some of that stuff. I won't have time to go through everything, but in the future, I will deep dive into some of these things in, in future videos. You do need a reasonably recent version of Node. I'm gonna say Ignite CLI. I'm gonna say at next because I wanna use the new version nine. Maybe by the time you're watching this, actually version nine will be out. I do recommend nine, so at next if it's prior, and then just at latest if it's already been released. New, and then we're just gonna say new pizza app. Uh, and there's a little story behind that. The pizza app was actually a client project that we built way back when Ignite was brand new. And that was the very first project that we used Ignite on. So it was a pizza, pizza chain. They still use the initial version of Ignite. It's very different from what you see now, but uh, that's kind of a cool little story. What bundle identifier? Com.jaminholmgren.pizza app. And we'll start the project right here. Now there's a workflow question and this one I'm gonna try to explain to you in a way that makes sense. Really it's in a order of how easy it is to get started versus how much flexibility and customization you can do. Expo Go has the least amount of customization specifically with native code, but it's also the easiest to get started. So I do recommend that if you're just getting started with React Native. If you're building something a little more complex, like a little more real world, I do recommend the second option, Expo Prebuild. I'm not gonna go into deep why, but essentially it allows you to customize all of your native code, but also preserve the great developer experience that Expo brings. So I do recommend this, and that is what we're gonna be doing today. If you're an advanced React Native developer, there is the DIY option, and that means that you're gonna be doing all of your own upgrades, you're kind of on your own. It does still have some Expo components in it, but it's very much more customized. I don't recommend this, even for real world apps, even for big apps, I think that Expo Prebuild works best, but the DIY option is available if you need it, or if you just don't wanna use Expo's services at all. And then it asks if I want to initialize a Git repository, so let's do that. And do you wanna remove the demo code? No, I wanna show you the demo code. And which package manager? Make sure you have Yarn installed before you run this. Install dependencies, yes. No, we do not wanna enable the new architecture. In the future, hopefully this will be the default. The new architecture is also beyond the, the scope of this video. If you are interested in seeing a video about the new React Native new architecture, please do comment below uh, and let me know about that. And here we go. Uh, this is gonna take a little while, so I'm just gonna snap my fingers and we'll be done. And just like that, through the magic of editing, we are done and it has spun up a new app. It says, need additional help, join our Slack community at community.infinite.red, and I do recommend that. Our Slack community is hopping. There's 2,000 React Native developers in there. Most of them are Ignite developers. So when you go in there and ask questions, you're gonna get answers much more readily than on other, other forums. All right, let's jump into Pizza App here. And I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna first run Yarn iOS, and while that's compiling, I'll also show you around the code base. Okay, it's currently compiling on the right-hand side, hopefully we'll be seeing that pop up once it's done. In the meantime, let's take a look here. Maestro has some workflows for running end-to-end -end tests. Uh, very cool 
system there. We're not going to look too deeply into that. There's an app folder that has most of the files that you'll be editing during the project. There's an assets folder that has icons and images. There's an ignite folder that holds component generators, the app icon generator, or the app icons that you can run ignite generators to, to generate. I'd love to show this off at some point. That's a really cool feature. There's other generators like model generators, navigator, and you can edit all of these. And when you run the generator on the command line, it will use your templates. It's very cool, but I'll do a separate video about that. Looking closer at the app folder, we have a variety of different things. The app.tsx is the entry point to your app. It contains the root level component for your app, as well as the navigation, initializing the state, hiding the splash screen after a certain amount of time. There's some providers like safe area provider, error boundary, gesture handler, root view for gestures, and the app navigator, which is the root level navigator from React Navigation is also located there. If we go to navigators to sort of follow this path through, we can go to the app navigator. And this has things like the welcome screen, the login screen, and the demo stack navigation, which if I go to the demo navigator, you can see that this also has the community room, the showroom, the debug uh, screen, and the demo podcast list. Let's go and take a look at what those look like. So I open it up and it's bundling right now. And here's the login screen, the sign-in screen, which we talked about before. If I tap to sign in, there's a welcome screen. There's a logout button up top. And then if we go into the main demo navigator, it has a drawer menu on the side. I'm going to close that for now. And this cool component screen, which is very long and it has all these different components. This is where you can actually, it's sort of like a, a replacement for storybook in a way we used to have storybook installed, but now we just use this one screen that has all of the components built in. You can see them right in there you can make changes and watch them change in real time, which is really cool. There's a tab bar at the bottom that has different screens like the component screen. I just showed you the community screen, which gives you a link over to the Slack community. The podcast screen shows you how to fetch from an external API and handle it in, in state. And so if you scroll through here, you can click on, you know, favorite a couple of these. And then if I come back up top and say only show favorites, it only shows these ones and it shows re-rendering lists and whatnot. There's also a debug screen, which I recommend you put in every app. It just shows you information about the, the app and, and uh, whether Hermes is enabled, whether Fabric or the new architecture is enabled. There's also Reactatron support. So if I open up Reactatron, and then you do have to reload the app. So I just go over here and press the R button, which reloads and preserves your spot in the navigation. It then connects, you've got a connection down here and you can see information that a debug like logging that goes to Reactatron. Reactatron is a desktop app that it's free. And we put that out as at Infinite Red, it's an open source app. And a lot of React Native developers use it because it's a very lightweight and very useful App. I'm not going to go over Reactatron in depth here, but I do want to show the send to Reactatron button. If I click this a few times, you can see that it, it logs something. If I click on it, it'll actually show some information in Reactatron that comes from over here. So that's just a communication between Reactatron and, and Ignite, and it's all built in right away. The integration is really cool. Going back here, we have different screens, right? So if I were to go to the screens folder, demo community screen, and I'll just pull it up over here and connect with the community. And I have different uh, components here. If I show that there's a heading, there's built in internationalization. So there's a translation there, demo community screen dot title, which corresponds to this folder right here. And it says connect with the community. And if I say here, Jamin says hi and save it and click through to the community screen. It says Jamin says hi at the, at the top, which is really cool. So, this can be translations, and if I are to, if I were to look, for example, in Arabic, which is a right-to-left language, we've put some work into this so that it works with right-to-left languages. There's also a Korean translation and some built-in things for internationalization. We take it very seriously. If I look at the podcast list screen, one of the cool things about this is that it's using this episode store, and it fetches the episode from an API. So if I click through to fetch episodes. 
This is a Mob X State Tree model. Now again, we might be removing this in a future version of Ignite, so just keep an eye on that. But for right now, we use Mob X State Tree, and this is how Mob X State Tree looks. It's reaching out using API sauce to get the episodes, and once it gets it, it populates the store. If you have a component that is only used on one screen, so for example, the drawer icon button is only used on this screen, uh, then we recommend co-locating it with the screen and other things like that. So that's where individual usage components will go is co-located right there with the screen. However, if you wanna share components or if you'd prefer to put all of your components into one folder, we do have a components folder and this has things like buttons, cards, empty states, headers. These are all built in components and we document them really well on the repo. So you can go take a look at the documentation and see how to use these. We use them all the time. They're very flexible. It's not a complete like UI kit. However, with these primitives, you can build very complex apps with very complex needs. So don't underrate Ignite's component system. It's actually one of those well-kept secrets, but it, it's how we build apps. There's also a config folder, which lets you configure development and production separately. There's a Reactatron integration, like I mentioned before. There are places to put your theme, which you have different colors. You can change these colors across your app. You can change the padding and spacing. There's some timing and topography uh, settings here within the theme, which is very cool. And then the services is the API service, which wraps around API sauce and lets you reach out to your API and make requests. So for example, this one reaches out to an API service that pulls in from an RSS URL and loads up all of the podcast episodes, which is what we, what we show here. There's also, of course, a utils folder, which includes some really cool hooks like use header and use is mounted and use safe in area inset style. So these things are all built in things that we use enough that we include them in the boilerplate. Again, there's a lot here. It's fairly deep, but out of the box, you get a lot for free. So it's well worth checking it out. That's about all I have time for in this video. But in the future, I do plan to deep dive on some of these concepts and show you how to use Ignite in a more complex way. Really, Ignite is built for serious app builders. It's fine for hobbyists, but it's probably a little bit much if you're just playing around with it. In the future though, if you ever do build something that is substantial, Ignite is fantastic for that. The folder structure works really well. Libraries that we bring in is very good, uh, highly recommended. Plus there's a great community around it. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. I really appreciate it. And if you comment down below and tell me what you'd like to see next, I do read them all. It's really helpful to see what the community is interested in. Hopefully this helps you out. We'll see you all next time.